This Bengal espresso machine is going to blow your mind. Check this out. G'day mate, my name's Ryde, and I wanna to take today to talk about the latest little trailer that just dropped a couple of weeks ago for the Bengal from Decent Espresso. It's mind blowing how good this machine is. And I wanna take you through some of the features that are out there because it's still under hush hush. And I've got a benefit of being inside one of the forums for Decent Espresso where it's talked about a lot more. However, some of the things John Buckman, the CEO of Decent Espresso has asked not to be revealed, but I'm gonna just share with you the information that's already been allowed to be revealed by John himself. And you tell me whether you think that this is the end game machine. And also I wanna hear what you think. Drop a comment in the section below. And if you like to see more of these videos, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. Thank you, your beauty. So what's new on this machine? Well, you can see straight away, the design is a complete overhaul. There's beautiful timber panels now on the side. It's still your classic white. There isn't a black version that's out yet, maybe down the track but they are toying around with playing with tinted timber as well. I've seen some images where they show pinks and purples and blues, but as of the moment, it's just a wood with a white, nice finish. And not only is it the finish, but there's also new lights added towards this. You've got an extraction light underneath. You've got a nice cup warmer light that rings around the side. We're just inside the edges and it's also backlit from behind. So if you have this on an island, then you can see it from the back and it just looks stunning. But the lights aren't just there for looks, they are customizable. You can have them dim, you can have them bright if you wanna see your extraction better. You've got that mirror to reflect it up there and that light just helps where your filming extractions. You can get a lot more light on your shot, but also it can be color customized so you can change it to suit the mood or suit your kitchen anything you want, like anything on this machine is customizable as well. And I just love that they've introduced these lights to just add that level and make it mint. Now, one of the revolutionary design capabilities that happened when they produced the DE1 was the fact that this had a huge tablet attached to it that graphed everything you can think of, every possibility, every variability. You can have your temperature, you can have your pressure, you can have your flow rate, you can have your weight, you have your time. And now you can do all of that on a much bigger display. Not only that, they've gotten rid of the ugly little USB charging port that used to come out the side, which I always just thought it felt like they'd just forgotten about that design, like the whole design of the whole machine. And they just have this dinky little cable coming out the side. Just never sat right with me. They've gotten rid of that. It looks like it's a nice little USB-C charging port now, or you can actually take it off and charge it elsewhere as well. So I love that. And the Bluetooth connectivity on the D1 and on the Bengal means that you can have that on your stand here and you look at it, maybe you can use USB remotely to start it up in the morning. I don't know what other capabilities they're thinking of, but they are looking at different ways to use the app. And speaking of the app, it is only available on Android to run. Well, it's kind of like an Android version. It needs a certain style of Android, but it can't run on iOS yet. Now they are looking at designing the app to work on iOS. And that means that you can buy iPads if you prefer and use them as your graphing monitor, which is super sweet. Also, because they're using a beautiful Samsung A9 Plus, it's like an 11 inch screen, it does only come in silver. So if you're looking for that complete white look, you will have to use an iPad down the track when they release it. But for now, you're just gonna have to stick with the silver. Yes, you can get some white tablets, but they weren't as powerful and that's why they went with the Samsung because it's so much more powerful, but that doesn't really matter in the full scheme of things because what you're really focused on is the actual app itself. And you can do anything with that. You can reskin it, you can pull up the bits of information that are most important to you. And of course, when you're done with all of your different espresso types, you can upload it to the cloud and someone else with their decent espresso machine can download it and run your exact profile. And I hope that they've made the inclusion of sliding in and out of the iPad much easier because on the DE1, it's a little bit fiddly. I find I have to go left to right, left to right to sort of squeeze it out and push it back in. But if they've just redesigned that to just smoothly slide in and out, woo, beautiful. And speaking of sliding in and out, 
the water tray has been redesigned as well. Because now, when you slide the water tray in, there's a little lid that sits neatly over the top and seals it and stops little bugs and germs and dust and whatever getting into your water supply. And not only that, but when you pull the water tray out, no longer do you have to reach around and lift the lever up and to get the water tray out enough so that you can fill it up with water. And that was a big gripe that I had with the original DE1 because the panel sits in front, the nice decent espresso logo there, but you had to remove that to get to the lever, to pull the lever up with one hand, pull the tray out with the other hand, fill it up with water and do the reverse to get it back into place. So in the end, I just leave the back panel off completely and I don't bother with it at all. But now they've gotten rid of the lever from the back. They do have a lever, a little lever on the top, but you don't even need to use that to fill it up with water. You only need to use that when you need to take the entire tray out to clean it or whatever. So that is a game changer and it means no more reach arounds, which is just fantastic. And also, hey John, if you're watching this video, please let me know how I'm doing. If you want me to do more videos on this, I wanna get my hands on one of these machines so I can do a deep dive into it. But hey, I know they're expensive. I know I live a long way away in Australia, but you know, let's talk. Make sure you reach out to me and we can chat. And the Steam One got a whole new design as well. You can see there from the images that the Steam One tip is no longer metal. It's a PPS material, which means it doesn't heat up. It means that the caked on milk problems that you might've had on old Steam Ones and old traditional style Steam Ones like this Seneso are no longer there. It's not gonna gunk up. It's not gonna fill up with milk. It's not gonna just sit there and look ugly. You're not gonna have to worry about it. Like it literally doesn't want milk to stick to it, which is brilliant. And now it's a continuous tube right through to the end of the Steam One, which means you have full flexibility. You don't have that ugly bolt and that limited functionality of movement. You now have complete movement and it looks much nicer from the front as well. Not only that, but the Steam One has three holes in it now and it's super powerful. It's a 3000 watt power drive, power Steam One that you can use on the 15 amp machine. It drops down to 2500 watts on the 10 amp and I think on the 110 volt 10 amp version, it drops down to 1500, I believe. But it means that you have huge amounts of power, that nice, dry, silky milk steam. And also you can raise the bars of the pressure up to a full six bars on your steam one, which obviously if you've got a 25 liter milk jug that you wanna steam for the entire nation, then you can use that power. You're probably gonna be overkill if you're just steaming for yourself. You're gonna flick that milk right up into the sky, but it's powerful. I mean, it's gonna do a lot of work in a short amount of time. So if you want quick heated milk, perfect. And also there's a probe in the end of the Steam One nozzle, which allows you to set an auto off switch when you reach a desired temperature. So say you want your milk at 59.5 degrees, you can pop that in, steam your milk, sitting there on the bench, go off and have a cup of coffee, enjoy your first coffee while your other one's steaming, and then come back knowing that it's turned off exactly at that right temperature, and none of that milk sticking to the end of your steam nozzle, which is fantastic anyway. And for those of you who have a DE1, and you'll know that it makes a weird sound like a duck, 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 because it's got a vibration pump in there. It's still got the vibe pump in there, but it's a different technology. I believe they've lengthened the strokes and so that it makes it super quiet now. I haven't heard it or seen it in action, but that's what I'm hoping for. And this warm up time is still like a two minute, ridiculous two minute, which is awesome and the whole drip tray is actually an integrated scale so no more having to put your little akai scale underneath there and losing that headroom you now have all of that scale built into the drip tray which is really nice really sleek now my concern is that there is bluetooth connectivity issues i had the problem with the akai scale just it would cut out randomly not consistently but just every now and then it would just cut out mid extraction and when that Bluetooth cuts out, it flicks the weight, desired weight, right up. So if you have a cutoff point of say, you know, two to one or one to two ratio out, and you'll hit that 47, the moment you lose that Bluetooth connectivity, you lose that extraction. So oftentimes I'll end up with a five mil extraction and I'll have to start all over again. So having that issue hopefully addressed with the integrated scale will be a godsend. I'm sure knowing the team at Decent, they have really thought about that so that there is no issues long term 
for that scale. Now the dimensions of it are pretty slim as well. Like it's only just bigger than the tablet, which is a 10.5 inch tablet. So it's probably 27 centimeters wide. I think it's 450 mil deep and it sits a little bit taller than the original DE1, but it's very, very small perfect for small apartments or where there's limited bench space. And anyway, this is the sort of thing that you want on your bench. If you've got an island where people can come in and look at it from all different size, this is gonna get your conversation going straight off the bat because people love this. It just looks so beautiful. You might not agree with me, I think it's one of the sexiest looking machines out there. I've always loved the Decent, just from a talking point of view. People complain about the extra handle there, but that's a real ergonomic design. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's become quite iconic in terms of their models. So it's there so that when you tighten the porter filter, you don't over tighten it like a lot of people want to do. And it's from an RSI point. So you're not using that angle and much more natural movement of closing your fists. So I actually love it. And it all comes in a sexy new suitcase, beautiful white. I love the fact that you can get your coffee machine into a suitcase, break it down and take it with you wherever you travel. I do take it with me wherever I go because I make better coffee than 90% of the world, so sorry. But I think just having that is a huge underrated feature. And that's something that just shows you the level of thinking that Decent Espresso go to, to just everyone else in the marketplace. And yes, it's gonna cost 6,000 US dollars, which is pretty high price. For a lot of you, you're thinking that's way too much and I'm never doing that ever. But I think if you compare it to the espresso machines in the market around 6,000, what you get from decent espresso machines from this Bengal machine is gonna be so much more. You'll be able to replicate any other machine. And yes, it's not a dual boiler. Yes, you do have to do the espresso first. And then if you wanna add milk, you have to do that second separately. That's a small sacrifice for everything else. I mean, you can do shots on this machine that no other machine can do. And you can do filter coffee, you can do tea, you can do make scrambled eggs. You can do what, like just ridiculous amounts of things on this machine. And I think the value, the bang for buck, hey, John Buckman, that's his name. The bang for buck is so great on this machine that you will not disagree that this machine is worth every cent of that $6,000. And also, if you have a DE1, you have one of the original DE1 sizes, then you can actually trade in your machine and I think they're talking about 20% discounts. I, I'm not 100% sure that hasn't been finalized yet, but there's gonna be a trade-in value so that you will be encouraged to upgrade to the Bengal and then they can sell the refurbished DE ones at a lower price as well, get more out in the market. Now they're only starting with 500 units, so you better get in quick if you wanna do this, but I'm sorry wife, I'm gonna trade in my machine and get one of these. And they're not coming out until early 2025, so you're gonna have a little bit of time to save up your money, but anyway, I hope you like this video. If you wanna see more, hit that little subscribe button down in the corner there. And also leave a comment below and let me know what other machines you wanna see. I love reviewing machines. I wanna do more of these videos, especially these upcoming machines because there's some sexy ass machines coming out soon and you wanna know what to buy in the market before you upgrade yours. Anyway, I'm Ride, your coffee coach. And as always, enjoy your brew.